Of course, we're going to start with sodium, everyone's favorite topic. Um, and salt is pretty consistent all the way through early CKD, advanced CKD without dialysis, when you're on dialysis and post -trans transplant, we always want to keep sodium in a low-ish range. Um, and so the recommendation across the board is about 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. Um, so why do we care about salt so much? Um, for, for PKD specifically, um, a high sodium diet is directly linked to cyst growth. So that's definitely motivation to help keep the salt out of our diets. Um, and then it also, of course, helps keep our blood pressure under control, which gets more difficult to do if PKD or CKD progresses. Um, and so trying to keep salt down can help, help keep that blood pressure control and help protect the kidneys even more. Um, and then just in general, um, general cardiovascular or heart health. Um, so again, the goal is about 2,300 milligrams, um, and then if there are any children that you are caring for on, on, on the presentation, I wouldn't wanted to include those goals as well. Um, and I always love to, to show this because I think it's, you know, just kind of eye-opening. Eye um, do we, so, you know, when we're kind of thinking about, is this a healthy menu or is someone, you know, you're trying to make healthy choices, I feel like this is a very reasonable a menu or food that someone might eat throughout the day. So um, like for breakfast, they're choosing turkey bacon, which is healthier for you, right? Um, they've got a, a healthy turkey sandwich, some veggie soup, they're choosing baked potato chips, um, you know, and then some chicken with some veggies for, uh, for dinner, even a side salad. So, um, you know, this seems like a pretty, a pretty healthy meal, but when you look into how much salt is in all that stuff, we're at over 4,000 milligrams of sodium, which may sound like quite a bit, um, but this is pretty average for the, United, for the United States. The average sodium consumption in the United States is somewhere around 35-ish um, milligrams, um, 3,500 milligrams of sodium per day. And so this is certainly not un, unreasonable. Um, and so if we look at maybe making some small tweaks to, to this menu, um, we can get the sodium down actually even lower than we need to go. So um, here we're swapping that bacon, turkey bacon, fun fact, is usually even higher in sodium than regular pork bacon because it's lower in fat, so you have to make it taste good. So usually they add more sodium. Um, maybe we can, instead of using deli meat, that's a huge culprit of sodium, I find, for a lot of people, um, maybe just using some baked turkey, um, swapping that soup for maybe some carrot and celery sticks, the potato chips for an apple. You get the idea, right? Um, and so if we really kind of nitpick and, and make lower sodium choices or even just kind of tweak how some of those foods are made, I got the sodium all the way down to 851, which even is even less than what we have to do. But you get the idea, right? Some of these small changes can really make a big difference in terms of your total amount of salt that you're eating throughout the day. Um, whenever I talk about sodium, um, I always like to, to um, mention this fact. So about 80% of the salt that we eat is already in our food. Um, and so to really work on getting the sodium out of what we're eating, we really want to focus on choosing foods that are low sodium in the first place. The salt shaker is actually not, for most people, adding that much salt. And in fact, if you are um, making most of your food at home and using non-processed ingredients, there is definitely room um, to add a little bit of salt to your food. Um, it, again, if you are not choosing those foods that are so high in sodium. Um, and so here are just kind of some, some of those common, culprit, common culprits. I mentioned the lunch meat, cured meats, bacon, sausage, smoked meat, salami, right? You know that one. Um, condiments can add up if we use large amounts of them, cheeses, soup. Um, bread is a surprising source of sodium that I think sometimes we don't think about. So I, I listed quick breads on here, which are um, breads that don't have yeast in them, and those tend to be even higher in sodium. Um, so things like biscuits, cornbread, banana bread, et cetera, but even like normal bread, if you will, or like, you know, just like a whole wheat or white bread that you might get from the grocery store, um, that can have a surprising amount of sodium. So you definitely want to check the food label on those. Um, of course, canned or pickled vegetables, frozen prepared foods. So you get the idea, right? These are the foods where the salt is coming in, and those are the foods that we really want to pay attention to um, the food labels on to make sure that we're not going over our sodium amounts. Um, so here I have just some recommended um, 
food alternatives for, for these high sodium options. So um, my favorite one that I always like to say um, is if instead of salt using fresh or dried um, herbs and spices, vinegar and lemon and lime juice is my very favorite trick. So, um, you know, and you can get fancy with all the different vinegars. So there's like balsamic, um, there's uh, an adorable little like fancy boutique vinegar store in Saugatuck, Michigan that I love to go to. And they have this blueberry vinegar that is amazing. Um, that's really great just by itself, but you, you get the idea, right? There's so many different things in, in, in vinegar, different vinegars that you can use that add so much delicious flavor. Um, so yeah, so again, you guys have these slides. I don't wanna waste time going through all of this information, but you can look, look through my swaps later. Um, another big culprit of sodium is food that is not cooked at home. So whether it's cooked at a restaurant or something you might pick up at a gas station or the grocery store or those types of things, um, that, that food tends to have a whole lot more salt than if you cooked it at home. And so that's not to say you can never go to a restaurant again. Obviously, that's not reasonable and no one wants to live like that. Um, but when you go to restaurants, you can try to make the best choices that you can. Um, and here are just kind of some general tips for help making lower sodium choices when you're at a restaurant. So um, avoiding sauces, dressings, or fried food, specifically fried fried foods that have that breading on them, um, asking for the sauce or dressing on the side, and then you kind of have control over how much goes on there. Um, you can just ask that something be prepared simply, most, depending on the type of restaurant that you go to, right? Um, most restaurants are pretty accommodating these days. Um, salad can be a great option, a great way to get in more vegetables, but you want to watch out for cheese croutons and dressing. Those tend to be the three things that really throw the sodium, um, you know, through the roof. Um, of course, we're just watching portion size. So even if you have something really salty, if you eat a reasonable portion, then that, you know, can likely fit within your 2300 milligrams, um, and always asking for nutrition information. So, um, basically any chain restaurant is going to have nutrition information, whether it's online or you could ask for it on like a brochure or handout when you're at the restaurant. And that's of course the gold standard for trying to figure out how much salt is in the food that you're eating. <laughs> 